So the royal family doesn't stay, like physically live in Buckingham Palace. They actually live in a castle in Windsor, which is on the English countryside. And when you stay at this hotel, you're put only 30 minutes away from the royal family. Hey babes, it's Aubrey, your favorite travel bay. And if you love history and opulence when you travel, then I have the perfect hotel for you. I am at the Cliveden House. It is a historic landmark, part of the National Trust here in England. We are in the English countryside of Berkshire, less than an hour away from central London. So if you want to stay somewhere that has rich history behind the walls and just luxury every turn, then this is the hotel for you. This impressive 350 year estate was actually built back in the 1600s by the second Duke of Buckingham, who had commissioned the property as a monument to his mistress, Anna Maria. She was Countess of Shrewbury in the late 17th century. And the estate sits on more than 360 acres with 47 rooms, 15 suites, and amazing views of the River Thames. Now, by the 1970s, it was leased to Stanford University and was used as an overseas campus. Today, the house is leased to a company that runs it as a five-star hotel, and it is a National Trust property. Now, I am in the Mountbatten Suite, which is an absolutely stunning junior suite here at the hotel and the estate. And before, it was the luxury hotel that we know and love today. This was actually a gaming room. Now, when staying here, you'll notice the rooms are named after prominent figures. This is the Mountbatten Suite, named after Louise Mountbatten, the first Earl Mountbatten of Burma, and a British naval officer who was a close relative of the British royal family. And speaking of names, I love the custom touch of having your name right on the door when you come to stay at the hotel. If you don't already feel like a VIP staying here, that touch will for sure make you feel special. And since the estate was built in the 1600s, it's been burnt and rebuilt twice since then. And over the course of its existence, which spans over more than three centuries, the estate has housed an earl, two dukes, three countesses, a prince of Wales, and the Viscount Astor. And when you visit, there's no detail left behind. Everyone from front desk to concierge will greet you by name. They'll also give you this convenient estate map where you can kind of take a look at all of the different gardens and, and rooms here at the estate and really kind of self-explore at your own pace. Um, along with if there are any special occasions that you're celebrating, they'll be sure to make it special for you. Once I arrive, they also uh, arrange for dinner at the dining room here, which used to be the drawing room for Miss Anna Maria. So every room here, every one you step foot into, there's such a unique story and a really element of uh, surprise, if you will, to, to kind of know the history behind it from the Mountbatten suite being a gaming room to the dining room that is just absolutely stunning um, to being uh, one of the drawing rooms for, for Miss Anna Maria. And I highly recommend the double baked cheese souffle. You absolutely love it. It's filling, but the portion size is, is really good. They have afternoon tea served Monday through Saturday. That's 12 p.m. to about 2.30. Dinner is served Monday through Sunday from 6 to 9. And then Sunday lunch that's going to be served from about 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Now, along with staying at the hotel, the spa here is world class. They have everything from custom facials to um, warm oil massages. I have the spa menu linked down below, so that way you can take a look and see what other services they have and what would be the best fit for you when staying here. And one of the benefits of um, being able to stay here and have access to the spa is that even if you're not um, here as a guest, there are like membership tiers to their wellness center and their spa and things like that, so you can still have access and take advantage of the amazing amenities that they have here. Now, of course, there's so many things to see and do here at the estate, but one element or activity, if you will, that I love um, to have just arranged for my clients who stay here and for those who really want to make their stay even more special and memorable, whether you're with a significant other or a family, um, is being able to 
get into a private boat and float on the River Thames. And you can do this also with a glass of champagne. And it's really special because you can arrange this ahead of time from about March 24th is when this starts. The weather is more conducive for getting out on the water. And um, you can also arrange to have a private lunch while you're on board as well. So it's really special, very unique, um, and a great add-on when uh, you're here in the springtime and just really want to take in the countryside from the water. Now, I think the Mountbatten Suite is definitely worthy of the investment. It's a classic room, rich history behind the walls. Um, I have linked below um, the list of the different rooms and suites because like I said, there's over 40 rooms here, about 15 suites total. So a lot to choose from that will be a best fit for you when you're staying here. So those are listed below along with the prices. So that way it's a best match for your budget. And there's offers at the hotel that you can take advantage of, like for midweek stays, you can stay for three nights and pay for two, or the iconic road trip package where an itinerary is literally built for you. It's always a good idea to check the website before you arrive though, or as you're planning out your trip, because that way you can see which offers are available at that very moment. And when my clients are staying here at the estate, they're always greeted with a bottle of champagne in the room, an assortment of chocolates, and a custom note to wish them well while on vacation. Not to mention breakfast delivered to your room to make sure you start the day off right. And if you don't want to stay in at the Clifton House, you can always go in for a National Trust property tour so you can see the grounds, check out the gardens, and really learn more about the rich history here. Now, when visiting the UK, a lot of people, you know, make their way to central London, right? That's where you can see Big Ben, the London Eye, Buckingham Palace, all the things, which I think if you're visiting the UK for the very first time, it's it's worthy of going to central London and really seeing a lot of those touristy hotspots. So you can really take in the sights and sounds of central London. But I also highly recommend, you know, extending your trip, if you will, about a week. I think you can do it all um, and, and make your way to the countryside because Windsor is absolutely beautiful. Berkshire countryside where we're at here is lovely. And it's just a nice um, contrast to the hustle and bustle that you'll see in central London compared to coming to the countryside where you hear the birds and you can see the sunrise over the garden here at the estate. And it's just such a calming essence to it. And then also being able to see the Windsor Castle where the family, the royal family is actually uh, where they live. And it's just cool because you're less than an hour away from central London. And, and with about a week's time, you could do the first half of the week in central London and do the, the latter part of the week in the English countryside and really get a good gist of what it's like um, with like modern versus the, the history here, the rich history. In, in London and in England. So if you have desires to visit London or visit the English countryside and you're like, I have no clue where to start, but I love where you're staying and could you help me out? All I have are, are my tickets, so I don't got nothing else going on or, or scheduled or booked. I would love to help you. You can click the link in my bio below and share with me the time of, of the year that you want to go some of the excursions you might wanna do if you wanna focus more on central London or you like the idea of more so staying on the English countryside. And then also the, the budget. What do you feel comfortable spending to really get that full on experience and your overall vision for your trip? So the more detail that you can share with me using the link below, the better that I can kind of map out a really great custom proposal to make sure that you not only experience all that London and England have to offer, but really also get a chance to immerse yourself culturally in a lot of the history here that's that's still here today and preserved so beautifully. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and will consider adding the English countryside to your travel wish list. And I am just an email or click the link in my bio away if you need any help with your travel planning. Thanks so much. Bye.